be. You're watching Morning at NTV. Many thanks for still staying with us. Allow us to delve directly into a Kickstarter conversation like I highlighted before we took that break. Now, the Uganda Nurses and Midwives Examination Board yesterday vowed to dismiss and cancel licenses of examiners who show up while drunk to supervise examinations. Now, this year, examinations kicked off in different nursing training institutions across the country. And we're looking at a total of 45,176 six nurses and midwives on diploma and certificate programs and then starting of course the end of semester examinations from 103 training schools across the country. So if a student fails the examinations she has to repeat the papers before she or he is promoted to another level. But before we get into the nurses and midwives education we need to know why the examinations board is worried about drunk examiners so <laughs> why hire them in the first place that will be the big question but of course we'll delve into other issues and of course to have that conversation this morning i'm joined by miss agnes wada the pro of the uganda nurses and midwives examinations board many thanks for joining us and welcome to morning on 10 tv thank you thank you indeed you're welcome now you know when you had this particular press uh, briefing that issue of drunk supervisors came out so strongly and the question that many Ugandans have of course after seeing that is why <laughs> you know it is it is a bit unfortunate for someone assigned with country duty to report to, du to duty when you're under uh, alcoholic influence it is a bit unfortunate we received a report of one person who did that mm -hmm. and the board had to come out strongly to talk about it to, to encourage our examiners not to go into that practice, it is really, really very bad. That one person, one rotten tomato, can cause issues. We have already identified the examiner, and we have tried to go into measures to stop it from happening again. Mm -hmm. Our um, issue would be, why would such an examiner be on the list of examiners? Because the examiners are identified from a long the lines of practice in health centers mm -hmm. and also in the education sector. And they are um, submitted by the training institutions. And our belief is that they must be well qualified to assess. But under the influence of alcohol, we feel it is really not good. That is right. why we, we earmarked that examiner and we stopped, and you stopped such completely. people right. from attending the examination. OK, so are you saying that for such a person you cancel the license indefinitely or just for a few you know for a few months until they rectify when a report like that comes it is something habitual to take alcohol mm -hmm. it is not something you're going to outgrow in the next uh, short time period sometimes it requires counseling so we write to the nursing council we report that case and the nursing council takes on the disciplinary measures but as the board it's an instant you do not participate in this assessment again so the license is revoked indefinitely in until this person is yes. rehabilitated until the nursing council reports differently mm -hmm. that maybe this person is rehabilitated but again we have many examiners such a person you may want to hold on right all right, so today's day two of the examinations. Congratulations, by Thank the way, you. for Thank going you through indeed. day one successfully. But uh, just give us an update on what transpired yesterday. Yesterday, as us who are still within the Kampala area, we are putting our ears on the ground. Yesterday was a good day. Uh, we have hotlines where we listen from the center coordinators who are supervising centers, mm -hmm. reporting cases of any unforeseen circumstances that may have gone on, and yesterday was a good day. We really started well. And as we were within the hotline, we tried to invite some media representatives in case of anything to listen with them. Mm -hmm. And I think we had a, a superb day. Yeah. As a board, we, uh, for that we applaud ourselves because quality is not simple to achieve. Mm -hmm. Issues of leakage have hit the country, but our examination board has never faced an issue of leakage. We have had the leakage-free exam, and we really thank God for that. You know, and that is one of the critical aspects. Whenever we're having any examinations nationwide, leakage is always an issue. 
Now, the question would be, how have you been able to achieve a leakage-proof um, examination, um, of course, um, period, year in, year out, without having those issues? Because when it comes to matters leakages, it's hard. It's hard for us to hear that coming from, of course, examinations, courtesy of nurses and midwives. So how are you able to make sure that you proof, you leak-proof your examination processes? Of course, an examination process is long. But one and uttermost, we thank God that he has been with us. He has given us well-trusted people. And we still look at nurses as people you can trust, especially the senior nurses who participate in the moderation. But apart from that, the board can't stand back and say we are really now only trusting God. Mm -hmm. There are quality measures that we undertake. We make sure that we, we work under confined environments. We engage the national security organs the police forces, they are always there with us under the environments we operate. We have a surveillance system of whatever is taking place. And you know, IT is one of the influencers, like, like, like the, the drivers to such leakage. Mm -hmm. So we try to make sure that we minimize and we, the, the gadgets that are used within that environment. And after that, we keep them solely not touched. Mm -hmm. They are not used for any other activity. Okay. And then there is uh, the supreme checking of everybody, be it the executive secretary. She's thoroughly checked when going into the confined environment where we, we, we do the moderation of test items. Remember, development of text, test items begins at a wider scale. Mm -hmm. Even tutors participate at school. They, they, they participate by developing the test item, but we have a phased manner of moderating these test items. Then we keep them for a longer period of time. They are, they are developed this year, then after five, six years is when you can use such a test item. Mm -hmm. Because you never know, a tutor may keep it and train again the school. Then you, you never know that this same test item has already been discussed at school. So right. we make sure we take a lot of time before we bring up the test items that are developed in the same year. So what happens to that one individual who's found culpable of trying to perpetrate um, exam leakages? Uh, what happens to them? Because we always know for every strategy that mm. is put, there has to be a deterrent measure in terms of a consequence. So what is it for this case? What I know, what, what, what we did as a board is to make sure that we have a committee at board level mm -hmm. that is in charge of security of examinations. We also have a disciplinary committee just in case we have such a circumstance and we make sure that we make the, the disciplinary measures known to the participants and we make sure that you take an oath of secrecy that makes you liable to whatever happens with your actions. And the board within its examination rules and regulations, they are, they, there is a, a full chapter on discipline. Mm -hmm. And then that discipline enlights of when can the board manage the case at hand, when can the disciplinary measures at board level be supreme, and when does the national security take over mm -hmm. the case. Of course it is, it is, uh, it is in relation to, to, to how the impact of the crime what I know is that we have in, in our examinations, the malpractices that have been experienced are, are, are issues of a student writing on an examination card, okay. then you're found with the body written on, then maybe you're trying to get in with, with, with papers. It is, such issues are common, you know, the students fear. Mm. But, but then there is, there is comprehensive check. And when such cases are found, they are presented to the security committee. Sometimes such students are requested to repeat the whole semester. Others are requested to repeat a paper. Others are, are, are totally nullified. Mm. That this ex the, your, your whole participation in this series is nullified. Mm. Then you seek either to, and, and some of them are requested to leave the profession. That whatever you did does not count in the profession of nursing. Actually, the latter, I think, is what uh, we've always been hoping happens. Because you and I know um, that the healthcare system in the country is wanting. Um, a majority of Ugandans are still disgruntled. I'm saying that 
I'd go to Health Center X and I feel like the personnel there are ill-equipped or not professional at all. Mm -hmm. So, of course, when it comes to malpractices, if you don't check it, then that means we'll be churning out ill-prepared, unprofessional, of course, them that will put our lives in danger to our health centers. Mm -hmm. Now, my question to you is, we're having over 45,000 nurses and midwives sitting for these particular examinations. Um, are you confident that these are men and women of quality, men and women who will safeguard, um, of course, the lives of Ugandans? Because when you go to hospital, we always say that as a basic normal person who doesn't understand medicine, you're totally, completely vulnerable to this you know, medic, so to speak, to this nurse. So are you confident um, as an institution that you're churning out this 45,000 plus are actually people of quality? What, what, what everybody knows is that nursing is a calling. Nursing is a calling. Apart from being a profession, it's a calling. It, it takes a lot, it, it goes a lot into your attitude. It goes a lot into your love for what you're doing. It goes a lot into your soft skills because it is basically nursing care. Now, the issue at hand is quality of nurses in hospitals vis-a-vis uh, -vis the expectations right. of the patients, the expectations of the, of the country in terms of health care. And when you look at what the board is doing, it is an assessment body. It is a, a link between the trainer and the employer. And what we do is to put in place measures that identify the, the, the qualified, someone who is ready to go and practice and who is not ready to go and practice. And we, we, we feel the training element is being handled well because of the curriculum. It is very comprehensive. It, is, it, it covers the wider scope of the requirements of nursing. However, we, we have issues like attitudinal issues mm -hmm. where the student, the student's attitude is not that good to learning and also practice. You, you, you've been presented with all circumstances that support your learning, the environment that supports your learning, but you as a person, you're not interested in what you are learning. Right. And then you qualify as a nurse and you have been taught very well, you know the best, you have the knowledge. But as you go into the hospital, the environment may change. Mm -hmm. You've been training where you have a fully equipped skills laboratory. All equipment is there, simulated environments. You've been practicing in a hospital with mentors, but now you're employed with, in an environment where maybe some of the equipment is not there, where you require a lot of mentorship right. by the seniors who are already in hospital. And these seniors sometimes are due to the patient numbers, due to motivation, due to other factors, may not give this due attention to this student who is just coming in. All professions require a lot of mentorship mm -hmm. by the employer, mm -hmm. orientation by the employer. And sometimes maybe the students need a lot of time to practice right. before they go into the, the actual, actual management right. of the let me ask you this, uh, because we always say that in, in careers where calling is critical, mm. we always say that it's okay. You know, you can always train for the skill, mm. but you can never train for the passion. And in careers whereby, you know, it requires someone who has been called into it, passion is critical. So do you see yourselves in the near future um, adding that facet of not just assessing the skill but also assessing the passion levels of every candidate so because we know that like you've said nothing requires a heart for people mm. and if you have all flying colors in terms of your skill base and assessment and zero passion you end up jeopardizing the lives of many ugandans and people so are we looking at that future whereby in the assessment, that passion factor, which is critical, which is everything, is also assessed? Yes, it has not even come this year or even the future. Mm -hmm. We have looked at it some few years back. Inclusion of soft skills among us, the key areas that are being assessed. All the checklists now have a lot of soft skills. And some soft skills are quite simple. At least greet a patient do some gesture to, to show that I'm, I'm, I'm part of you in this and we are going to manage this together. That is assessment of the soft skill. But soft skills, remember, are broad. Yes. You may be strong in one and weak in, in, another. in another. 
So it is an issue of encouragement. However, we are not only looking at that. We are looking at how uh, something to do with career guidance, mm. where a parent does not have to push me into nursing because in the next two and a half years, I'm going to graduate and stop taking money out of my parents' pocket, and I'm being pushed into nursing, yet I'm not interested in nursing. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at a situation where, as a country, we should look at career guidance uh, uh, to, to in schools, because these are young, we consider them young children right. joining profession. They, right. they have just completed their A-level. They are joining the nursing profession at certificate level. And they have not been oriented into what nursing may take. And then in terms of how they, they, they choose, it's passing. You have the grades mm -hmm. to join the nursing profession. Sometimes we should look at the other factor. Is this child interested? Are they passionate Are about they it? Are they passionate about it? Right. Do they love people in the first place right. or they love money? Mm. Do they love themselves or they love their neighbors? Okay. It is very difficult. Even God said, to come to me, love your neighbors, you love yourself. But you see, we fail on that one, yeah. especially the neighbor who is in need. All right. So <laughs> hopefully we'll get to that ideal standard. Mm. Um, thank you so much for coming through. But pass rates, what are we looking at in one second? Uh, the, the nurses have been uh, uh, performing well at, at student level. That is 92% to 97%. Okay. The failure rates are not that high. However, we, 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 when we look at max, we, we are not looking at it comprehensively. So there is an introduction of continuous assessment, which is handled in schools, to assess the student on a continuous basis, which is now going to contribute 40%. It's a new phenomenon starting okay. with this exam mm -hmm. that is taking place. The 40% is going to come from the school. There we are going to address the attitude issues, okay. where the school is completely involved into assessing the attitude of the student. All if right. you're not yet ready, the school is free to advise that this one is not ready for the national exam. And 40% is a big, is a very big, big percentage. Thank you so much for coming through. Miss Agnes Wada, PRO of the Uganda Nurses and Midwives Examinations Board. We wish you all the best. Thank you. And success to your students. Thank you. It's <laughs> all been right. nice talking to you. Thank you so much. Well, that's it for our Kickstarter conversation this morning. Hashtag Morning at NTV. Let's engage. This is Morning at NTV.